Each night, there are hundreds of veterans across Minnesota that have nowhere to call home. No kitchen to cook a good meal, no bathroom to shower in, and no warm bed to crawl into after a long day. The latest research shows that the average homeless veteran is 51 years old, and the majority of them have been without a home for more than a year. A rapidly growing group of local citizens are working hard to get homeless vets off the streets before winter begins. These buildings have sat empty and decaying for the last decade. Now a group of local volunteers, organized by State Senator Jim Abler, are trying to turn the lights back on and help homeless vets. It used to be the old state hospital and it served people with a mental illness over the years and treatment conditions evolved and now the state got out of the business of these kind of institutions nearly altogether. And so now the county bought them and they're using some of the buildings, but these sit vacant for a decade now. Every day uh, a homeless veteran sits under a bridge uh, at risk and unsafe and a great many in Minnesota actually take their lives and it's tragic and many of us think that's just intolerable and so the opportunity to have these cottages uh, coupled with that need is what's driving this. The project to get these buildings up and running will not be easy. The work needed is extensive. Well there's a lot to do. There's no heat, no hot water, the toilets look like they're uh, an iron mine. Uh, just very stained. Uh, we have dozen, dozen, dozens of broken windows. Uh, we have the walls need to be all upgraded and painted. The floors, but the building is as solid as a tank. The floors are terrazzo, the outside is brick. The skeleton of this place is amazing. It only took a few days and more than 1,400 people had joined a Facebook group called Friends of Homeless Vets. From there, people and businesses started offering to help. But we're on track. We've had a work day just last week with 60 volunteers. We've got a list of over 150 people wanting to help. We have businesses, uh, glass companies, heating companies, plumbing, uh, roofing uh, companies, and individuals wanting to help. And the community really has rallied around this, and I'm so proud of, of them. There will be a time for collecting smaller donations, such as toiletries and everyday products. But for now, the focus is on some much larger items. Right now we need uh, donations of, uh, I need some boilers. I need a, a million BTU gas boiler. So if you have one of those in your basement, that's in good working order, brand new is better. Um, we need that. We need uh, big water heaters. We need uh, heavy duty uh, electric washers and dryers. And to make this already ambitious project more difficult, they hope to open the first two cottages by December 1st. Ordinarily, this would be an eight-month or a one-year project. You know how things go. But December 2nd, it's going to be cold, and there's no heaters in those cardboard boxes. And it might not make it to January 1st. And so I've never been involved in a project where literally, but for this happening, it's life and death. The plan includes three cottages that will hold at least 20 people each. They intend to eventually have one cottage for men, one for women, and a third for families. Once operational, the program will be run by Eagle's Healing Nest. There's a huge, huge need. We're working with a group called Eagle's Healing Nest out of Sox Center, and that's going to be the group running the program. And so the idea about Eagles, they're the warriors, both men and women, and they're, they're broken, and so they can come to the healing nest and get well, and eventually they'll soar the nest and get back on their way. And the secret that's different than other veterans programs with their operation is this is a man or woman's home. And they can live here as long as they choose. While these buildings might not look very inviting right now, they will soon be ready to be a place of healing and hope. They want a warm bed so they can get out of the cold. And they want someone to care about them. And one of the beauties of the program is that the men and women, they're band of brothers, band of sisters, and they actually care about each other. And they want a chance to themselves care and to get back their self-respect and get back their momentum in their life. And experience the, the wonders of the life they've made possible for us by protecting all of our freedoms. And so they have a bad night and one of their brothers will sit up with them and get them to mourning through a PTSD bad night. They might not have had that help under their bridge. They might not have made the night. And it compels everybody to do the right thing by that. And it's, um, it's a wonder to see and it's a real privilege to be a part of that. When the veterans are ready to leave, Senator Abler is excited to see these brave men and women once again become part of the fabric of our community. 
Our goal is to help them live here comfortably and safely and then eventually uh, move on and go back to what they were. Just an active member of our society and pretty exciting. For North Metro TV News, Ben Hale reporting. If you are interested in helping turn the lights on for homeless veterans, go to NorthMetroTV.com and click on News. There you'll find contact information and links to the Facebook group. You can also just search Friends of Homeless Vets on Facebook and request to join the group.